Hi guys, welcome. In today's video, I am going to show you how I made for the very first time edible fire. Okay, so this is my first time trying to make isomalt fire and I have to say it was a lot of fun. I don't know why I don't do more isomalt more often and here's the process of how I went about it. I will start by measuring a cup of isomalt crystals and adding it to a quarter of a cup of hot water. I'm going to follow the package instructions and I will carefully watch the rising temperature. I'm supposed to get this to 320 degrees. Did I know the temperature rises super fast when you're melting candy and all of a sudden my temperature was at 340 degrees. Thank goodness it was okay. It all worked out. So no worries. That my isomalt is liquid. I pour some onto silicone cups and then little dollops onto a silicone mat. Yes, I am using macaron mats, but they work really, really well and we will just ignore the circles. So now it's time to add some color. I add some candy colored yellow to one of my cups and with a tiny little spatula I am going to start drawing flames on my mat. I will make them thick on the bottom and I will give them almost like teardrop shapes, little pointy ends. Some will have one pointy end and some will have two or three. I will now make the red. The red candy color will just outline the yellow. And if you're wondering why my baking sheet is gone and my silicone cups are gone, it is because I keep putting them in the oven. When the candy gets a little too hard and I can no longer work with it, I put it in the oven and it melts and then I take it back out and I can work with it again. So here we are. I will make some more flames, decorate some more. I will play around with them until they start looking like flames. Another thing that I wanted to try is instead of adding red coloring to the edges of the flame, I'm going to just dab the tip of toothpick onto the red food coloring and kind of paint the red onto the flames. So this will give it a little bit of a different effect and there will be less red than on the other ones. When my candy flames are hard enough so that I can pick them up, I start shaping them and I will make sure that I make the bottom flat so that they can stand up and allow them some time to dry. I'm gonna keep doing this for a while, playing around, making more flames, shaping them and letting them rest. This has been a lot of fun, so just enjoy, be patient, and know that the last flames are always gonna be better than the first flames. Okay, these are some of the flames that I made and after I am done making some little logs for my fire, I will put these together, assemble them into one big campfire. All right, now that my fire flames are ready, I am going to make some logs for my campfire. And I have some chocolate fondant mixed with gum powder. So I have made chocolate gum paste and this will be the logs. Ooh. Ooh, we are, we're gonna make some teeny tiny little sticks with marshmallows. They are going to be so cute. All right, all right, I'm gonna work on the other part first. Let's focus, focus. First, I'm going to sculpt out little tiny little logs for my campfire. I am going to shape them a little bit imperfect. I am going to to give some texture to the ends and um, some lines to give texture to the sides of the logs. I'm gonna make a bunch of them. But I can't resist it. I'm gonna work on my tiny little s'more sticks. They're just too cute, I can't wait. I think it's the tiny little details that make a huge difference in the cakes. So this is gonna add a lot to it. Oh my God, look how cute. And once I have some marshmallows on this, it's gonna be adorable. But back to business, more logs. This is 
gonna be the bottom, the ground where the fire logs are going to be placed. Because we can't just put them on the grass. Okay, so now it's time to assemble the fire. Now that I have the base for it, I am going to play around, cut some logs and add some flames. And it's almost like a puzzle. I have to make them all fit and make it look right. So it takes a little patience to get this to where I want it to be, but it's gonna be totally worth it at the end. Yeah, then I have to find what flames work perfectly for my campfire. And now it's time to put it all back together and put my little pebbles all around the border. That's it, this is a little fire for my miniature camping scene. And now I'm going to color it with some powdered chalk and then add some little stones to the side to create a border. And that's it, it's tiny, it's tiny. Look at my hand next to it, yeah. All right, because safety always comes first, we need to have some pebbles bordering our fire so it doesn't go out of control and burn the whole place down. So here, tiny little rocks with gum paste. I make some white, some black, some brown, and I left it a little bit imperfectly mixed. And now I'm going to add some texture. I will also use a little paint to give this almost like a uh, look like it's on, like it's lit, like the logs are reflecting the light of the fire. I want to give the bottom of the fire pit a little bit of an ashy look. and some more reflections on the logs. Okay, all right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make isomalt fire. I definitely have to say we got to do this more often. This was a lot, a lot of fun. I loved it. And um, I think it looks so great. It adds so much to my glamping cake. All right, so. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the bell button if you want to be notified where, when another video comes out. And please don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like my video, subscribe to my channel, and thank you everybody who has watched my videos. And please don't forget to comment. I love hearing from you guys. So uh, if you have anything you want to see me do or any questions about anything I've done, uh, just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching, bye. Thank you.